Yeah, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. The contrast couldn't be stronger than between the gentleman before me and uh, me right now. Uh, at least I found a couple of people who were wearing ties. So that's uh, giving me some comfort. I'm wearing a Lady Gaga mic, which I'm not used to. And uh, yeah, I'm meeting people who are yeah, more entrepreneurial and innovative than the company I'm standing for is supposed to be. There's a difference, there should be. Let's see whether the presentation shows up. No, here we go. The first thing you find out is that you don't see the Lufthansa logo up there. Why don't you see the Lufthansa logo up there? Uh, the first chart is representing a thing we started last year, the Lufthansa Innovation Hub in Berlin. And uh, that's also the reason why I'm here, because this bunch of young people uh, convinced me to, to get here and to talk about the future of global air travel. Uh, that's a bit far-reaching, I have to say. If you expect me to predict the future of global air travel, I probably cannot fulfill your expectations. But uh, what I can do and what I try to do is to tell you something about the global trends in aviation and how the Lufthansa Group and others are going to deal with it. Very, very fast. The major trends inf influencing our industry. Growing economic strength of Asia has changed the way we are doing business. The growth in China has been 10% per year between 2002 and 2012. Buying power, purchasing power, new customer segments uh, rising up in the East. Global shift in democracy. Societies in the West getting older, thereby we drive different patterns of consumption and mobility, and we have to take this into account holistically. The most important trend, of course, uh, which has a tremendous impact on our industry, is the global trend of digitization. After the industrialization, this trend is probably having the biggest impact on the way we are doing business and changing the way of the airline industry, as you could see before, with uh, Priceline, in a way which goes beyond our expectations a couple of years back. The point is, uh, the airline industry actually has been an early starter to digitization. Many of us forget about that. The first digital reservation systems for air travel started already back in the 1950s. American Airlines was it to use computer systems for booking purposes, for reservations. In the 70s, the airline industry started global distribution systems. And uh, so on and so on and so on. Today, we use in the airline industry, obviously, uh, devices like uh, a mobile, mobile boarding pass. For Lufthansa, of course, the boarding pass uh, appears where a passbook and can be used. And uh, the mobile boarding boarding pass for Lufthansa appears on the Apple Watch. So there are links between digital innovations and the traditional airline industry. The biggest difference, of course, is if you look back and uh, think about it, what happened in the airline industry, traditionally, innovation and digitization has traditionally been used to upgrade already existing processes. So we took new tools, new technologies, not to innovate our industry, but to streamline uh, our existing processes. There's a paradox in the industry if you look to the way where we spend our money and where the emphasis is. The airline industry probably uses the most developed piece of technology which uh, is available, which is the aircraft, which makes uh, aviation and air travel now the mo by far the most safest mode of travel. We have real high tech and uh, the forces of the market drive us to invest ever more into aviation technology. On the one hand, we are following a policy of zero tolerance, dedication to safety. We are driving highly sophisticated research and development, building really high-tech products. Uh, for example, in the Lufthansa Group, Lufthansa Technik uh, is an innovative uh, uh, and a leader in technology in worldwide uh, maintenance role um, 
maintenance industry. On the other side, if you look to the business processes we perform at the airport, you easily find out that we are far away from being customer-centric, that uh, we are far away from viewing at the entire travel chain. We are far away from providing perfect and convenient processes on the ground. We have uh, complex interfaces with many, with many parts of the, of the service chain. We, lacking, we are lacking transparency. We have uh, slow adaptability to technology in innovation in our service partners, for example, at the airport. And this leads to a situation where, on the one hand, we are using the best, the best piece of technology which, which is uh, available for money, and on the other hand, we are using processes uh, on the ground which destroy a part of the service proposition we can make to our customers. One example would be the fact that from the decision to introduce electronic boarding passes and electronic tickets to the full implementation in the aviation scene, uh, IATA and uh, the, co uh, the companies represented in IATA took about 10, uh, 10 years to go from zero to 100% full implementation. And if you look to the speed of developments in today's world, especially with new companies, new ideas coming up, you can see a marked difference between the airline industry as it used to be and still is in many parts, and the reality in other parts of the travel chain. If you look to other parts of uh, the entire travel chain, you can see that obviously change is underway and change is going on. And Priceline is just one example of many others where dramatic changes have occurred. It's impressive that still in our service chain we control among the airlines, we still have many pain, pain points uh, in our processes, even using digitization, whereas in other parts of the travel chain, almost everything has changed. Ten years ago, and uh, we had this presentation about the tour operator business, we were still browsing catalogs for inspiration, reading travel guides, and I guess some still do today, at least I'm doing that. We were booking trips through travel agencies, very strange thing. We were using printed tourist maps. Some of us uh, even did uh, work around with photo albums at home with paper photos. Nowadays, the range of travel is exactly the same. Not much has changed. Reaching from inspiration, reading, getting an idea about a destination, to sharing, showing where you have been. But the main difference is there is an app for almost everything in the entire chain. And therefore, and this is new, everything is really connected. Especially with the mobile devices, I have to admit, I'm still struggling at times with these things, but I'm getting to it. There are apps for everything, Every, everything can be connected and everything will be connected. And the question is, how do we use that in the interest of the customer? How do we change from the traditional airline approach, where we look from the inside and see innovation and digitization primarily as a tool for more efficiency and to upgrade our processes into tools where we think from the outside, from the perspective of the customer, and develop new innovative propositions for them. We had uh, the impressive market cap of Priceline, $60 billion. We have some digital travel applications, uh, and probably you, more, you know more of them than I do. But uh, these travel applications, their market capitalization is roughly 90 billion euro. So that's 100 billion US dollars. If you look to Lufthansa, uh, one of the so-called uh, incumbent carriers, legacy carriers, the Lufthansa group, we employ 120,000 people. We have 30 billion plus uh, revenue per year, and our EBITDA is usually somewhere between 1 billion, 2 billion, with a target, of course, going up to 3 billion in the next couple of years. The market cap for the Lufthansa Group is 6 billion. 
the market cap for the Lufthansa Group was 8 billion in 2000. So between 2000, uh, when Priceline was hit by the, by the bubble burst, Lufthansa had a market cap of 8 billion. 15 years later, we are at 6 billion. And we have doubled our revenues. We have doubled the number of employees. So this is giving us a wake-up call, of course, because the market cap expresses from the side of the market participants the expectation in our future. We believe in our future. Obviously, market participants, people who invest, they see a better future in investing in new startups, in new ideas, in innovation than in existing industries. And in that aspect, this is a very telling chart. And it gives us, of course, uh, a sense of urgency when it comes to changing the way we do our business in Lufthansa. Now, uh, the expression startup, uh, I, I have to say, is a bit romantic. You know, I, for me, uh, a company with 40 billion uh, dollar market cap is not a startup. I think it stands for a new approach to business, for being fast, for being adaptable, for being innovative, for being flexible in adjusting to new trends and developments. And this is certainly something where companies like Lufthansa, with a 60-year history, and uh, some of the thinking which is in the company has also a 60-year history, has to adapt in order to be able to deal with future challenges here. And uh, there are, of course, besides the market cap, there are some other serious considerations here. If we think about, as an airline group, if we think about competitive threats, usually we are talking about Gulf carriers, about low-cost carriers. That's all true. We need to think about customer segments and how we respond to it. I guess the biggest challenge is that through digitization and through the marketing power of these companies, of course, there is a big threat for airlines like Lufthansa that the customer interface is taken away from us. And if that happens, of course, that would have serious implications. So besides the fact that we start to think from outside in, we need to think how can we become much better in order to get the customer interface back into, let's say, into our control. You never can control a customer interface, of course, but we do not want to be blocked out from that customer interface. The question is, will we be able to adapt? Will we be able to change? And can we change perception and reality in the aviation business? I think uh, the most important point for us is to understand the major shift in the way our customers are and what they demand, taking ongoing trends into account, digitization, democracy, as I have mentioned. Right now, I have to say again, Sometimes I am under the impression that uh, we are too limited in our thinking. Today, Lufthansa, usually we think about potential Lufthansa customers, about potential new Lufthansa customers and how we approach them. What we probably have to do is we have to widen our horizon. We need to think from the outside, and that means we need to think about the traveler in general. And that's uh, now there is something blinking here. Okay, I have to speed up. The growing interconnectivity between travel modes and different services in the travel is, of course, a huge opportunity for us. Some examples what we are going to do or what, what may come up. In future, technology will allow us to use biometrics to guide our customers through the airport. It will allow us to facilitate passenger security checks. We will, we will combine virtual augmented reality. So to speak, we, we will have the chance to use our aircraft windows as displays, as uh, monitors, so to speak. And last but not least, one of the other trends we are thinking about, we can use artificial intelligence to, in combination with our existing data about the customer, to think for our customers ahead, for example, taking proactive bookings for his travel needs next week. We have a couple of initiatives launched already in-house. Personalization using our customer data. We have 300,000 plus customer touch uh, check-ins per day. 
we have uh, probably the biggest number of customer data available to help us to address personal needs of customers. We are in the way to have uh, a comprehensive connectivity onboard facility in all our aircraft combined with uh, real life internet on board. This is a project which is in process and we will open our uh, we will open our data via an open API to take out certain chunks of data to develop new solutions for our customers. All things considered, we have a vast spectrum of activities around digitization. We want to change airline paradox through these initiatives and we want to get ready for a different in the future and this may also lead to the fact that we will change our investment plan. Currently 80% of our investment goes into aircraft and hardware so to speak and uh, probably this will have to change. We will have to shift from aircraft into, into uh, intellectual property and software in order to be able to deal with these trends and developments. And last but not least, we believe if we want to see to our business from outside to the inside. We cannot do this all on our own. We have our co-creation up here in Berlin. We have established that last year. We have a combination of people from our industry, from Lufthansa in-house, and in, in we, we invite external startups with their ideas to work together with us on new projects, <coughs> on solutions which go beyond, beyond our core airline business in order to provide solutions which incorporate the entire travel chain. We want to address these issues in both directions. As I said, we will continue to use digitization to improve our, our core processes, but we will use it in a much larger degree in future to see it from the outside to develop new solutions. And uh, our co-creation up here in Berlin is ready for ideas and we want to open this mind in order to prepare Lufthansa and the Lufthansa group for the future and not only change the perception on the company on how we deal with these trends but also to change the reality. Thank you very much.